Okay, welcome back to Time to Evaluate. This is where we take a topic and a question. Uh, we think of building three key analysis points and then we practice evaluating the point we've made. It's quite an important skill there level. If examiners are hoping that students will evaluate the actual point that they previously analysed. That, uh, that leads to stronger evaluation. This topic video looks at cross price elasticity of demand, which is a year one micro topic. And here's the question. Evaluate the significance of the coefficient of cross price elasticity for a business. So let's look at uh, some of the points we can make. Well, the first point is that if cross price elasticity is a high and positive coefficient, that's important for business because it suggests a strong substitution effect if relative prices fall. Don't forget, uh, for two substitutes, the cross price elasticity is always positive. However, evaluative phrase, the size of the substitution effect will be lower if consumers perceive a relative price change to be temporary and not permanent. So yes, people will switch, but uh, if they think the price uh, change is going to be a relatively short-lived phenomenon, the, the cross-price elasticity effect may not be as strong. Second point relates to two complements. A negative cross-price cross -price elasticity says that two products are complements. This might persuade businesses to bundle products to increase their total revenue. This is a, uh, and you could put an example here, of course, in, in uh, computers and peripherals and software, for example, or cars with, which come with free insurance, etc. So bundling is an important idea. So you reduce the price of one product, put it into the bundle, and people are more likely to buy the bundle, increasing revenue. However, bundling does not always work. Consumers may not like the increased complexity of offering a bundle product rather than kind of single one price product and working out the perceived value of the bundled offer. There's also a kind of behavioral economics point that if you chuck in something for free or very low price, uh, that becomes anchored in the minds of the consumer and they then expect that product to be cheaper uh, forevermore. A third possible significant point about coefficient, if you have a low positive cross price elasticity, that suggests that competing sellers um, uh, suggest that competing sellers may actually get some better revenue from colluding. So low cross price elasticity suggests the, um, <clears throat> suggest the products are weak substitutes. Uh, there may be some gains from price collusion between sellers, bringing a bit of game theory there. However, price collusion is illegal, uh, risks certainly a heavy fine for those caught. Game theory suggests that most price cartels eventually collapse. So hopefully you can see here, you're making three analysis points and you're trying to evaluate the actual point that you've made. Quick revision on cross price elasticity of demand. Uh, cross price elasticity for substitutes are always positive. So for close substitutes, you get a big substitution effect. Price of X changes, demand for Y changes significantly. If they're weak substitutes, big increase in the price of S leads only to a, a small change in demand for T. And for complementary goods, the cross price elasticity is always negative. Uh, left hand diagram here, we have a close complement, small fall in the price of A, big complementary demand for B, and a weak complement, the relationship is, is smaller, the coefficient is less. Okay, so there we go, some evaluation and some analysis on cross-price elasticity.